Okay, so let's dive in. This is a, a wonderful link between the Teaching Essential Number Sense course and the work you're doing here. And it's something that I am going to continue to build upon. Calculation is something that young children do from very, very early on, and there are amazing ways that we can link it, particularly to your work on subitizing that you'll learn more about in module one of the Teaching Essential Number Sense. So this is just going to be an introduction to add to your gurus, uh, your experts, and begin to understand a little bit more about the background of concrete pictorial abstract. You will uh, hear it referred to as CPA. You will hear people talk about the mastery curriculum, about Singapore, about Shanghai. And what we need to do a lot more of is say, hang on a minute, what is this all about? Where did it come from? Whose work are we, you know, using here? And we don't hear those conversations, partly because people are in a big rush, because life is hard and busy and we're not just teaching maths. So stopping and asking those questions isn't always people's priority. And secondly, because we always trust the people who we <laughs> we listen to. And if you're using one scheme exclusively, and if it seems to be from quite a powerful body, and they don't ask you to ask these questions, then why would you? So I'm going to say, you should always ask these questions. And the people who are leading your training, the people who are writing your schemes should have the answers. And if they don't, I would be treat what they're saying really carefully because we all need to understand the, the foundations of things. Otherwise, we are in danger of becoming a follower and not a user. So the first person we need to know about is Jerome Bruner. If you don't look up anybody else on this slide, make sure Jerome is who you do look up. His work is synonymous with early years uh, training and development and understanding for the last 50, 60 years. Um, his work is incredibly closely linked to the development of Reggio Emilia and his work on maths is extremely relevant. So look him up, make sure you know who he is, even if you only read something for 10 minutes, get him on your radar. Jerome Bruner alongside Lev Vygotsky, who talked about actual zone, proximal zone and future zone, something we all need to understand, very, very useful about our own learning. Jean Piaget, which most people have heard of, Richard Skemp and Zoltan Deans. And Deans may sound familiar to you because that is the name given to the base 10 equipment that many people use in school where you've got your ones and tens and hundreds and it was developed and you know named after Zoltan Deans. Their work collectively was used to inform how Singapore completely changed their maths curriculum over 20 years ago. And the work that Singapore did very much fed into the work that Shanghai has done in more recent times, which then fed into what many schools are now following, which is known as the mastery approach. Be really careful because I have not found many, if any, schools who have questioned what mastery really means, where it comes from. And this isn't the time for me to go into this, but I would say that I don't like the word mastery because it sounds like you finished. Mastering is what we're after. And at every year group and at every stage, be it our three-year-olds or us, we are trying to, you know, we're mastering. We are trying to master, so therefore the process is mastering our tools and our skills by applying them, by investing in ourselves. So I hope that's some food for thought for you there. It's in an area I'm incredibly interested in and can share lots and lots of knowledge with you about. And I will be looking at it more in module five of the Teaching Essential Number Sense. So here is an example of a nursery child looking at concrete pictorial abstract. So she hasn't been sat down in a lesson with a teacher thinking, right, I need to move them from concrete, meaning things, real things or maths equipment, through to drawings, through to using symbolic recording. Uh, 
this is a child, this is so important, revealing that that process just makes sense to children, given the right experiences, given the right environment, which I'm hoping, again, is very, very exciting for you. Because many people have got a concrete pictorial abstract process in, you know, in their key stage two classes, and it is very formulaic in many cases. We're going to do it like this, we're going to do it like this, and you know, that can work to an extent, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel organic to the teacher or the child. So I want you to pause the video here and do, you know, what I say a lot to do with subitizing. I just want you to say, you know, what do you see? And also the, how do you see it? What is going on in this image? So, so I'm hoping that you felt able to talk about everything you see. A lot of practitioners will say, what, what's the board they're using? How is that being made? What are those? Are they cubes? Are they bits of Lego? What are they? Make sure you are asking and noticing those things as well, because apart from anything else, it's going to make sure you're a really good listener with your children. When you're teaching maths, if you're not careful, you become so focused on them saying numbers and talking about amounts that you, you become deaf to the other things that they're saying. And we must never, ever do that. So start off by saying exactly what you see. Have a discussion about what you see versus what you think is going on. So that's objective versus subjective. And then I am now going to hone in with the lens on the numbers and the amounts. But I want you to really hear that message clearly that that's not the first thing we should do. Because also it, it shuts adults up as well as children if you do that. So these are some things that I could see numerically. I could see a two and a four. Interestingly, when you ask older children about this, they won't necessarily say that because they think that a two needs to be written as a digit two and a four as a digit four. So that's been very interesting in researching with key stage two. But depending on the knowledge of the person looking, I'm going to say I can see a six with a two and a four in it. And I want you to point on the screen where you're looking if you can see that. I can see that the four amount is more than the two. I can see that there's two more in the four than there are in the two. And there's a two and a two in the four. That's a lot. And of course, if you think about what I'm saying here, I'm basically talking about calculation. I'm talking about the fact that later on, I'll be able to realize then that the reason there's four is because two and two equal four, because there is a two and a two in four. The reason if you've got two, you, to make four, you need two more because there's a two and a two and a four. And we've got things like a three and a one, which is harder to see, but they are there. And that is something, again, I'll do more with you in the Teaching Essential Number Sense course. You've also got a little slide at the top there where you can see there are two red at the top, two red at the bottom, and four in the middle. And that is so lovely because that four in the middle looks quite different than the four around it. But the justification that it's still four in using the red cubes or the red whatever we're going to call them because there's still a two and a two that links to what we call conceptual subitizing so it's wonderful if you thought that was impressive look at where this knowledge can go so you can think about what year group this is appropriate in but this on the next slide is exactly what you were seeing but using symbols it isn't appropriate to do what I'm going to show you here with early years. What I'm showing you here is where the knowledge you're giving them goes next. So we've got things like this. I can see two and four. I can see six with two and four in it. That's what our early years children can do. So that then translates to, well, if we're saying we can see a two and a four, and that's equivalent to the six, this is how we write it. Now you can, I'm hoping you can see now, this is a massive jump. We've got all that talking, all that seeing, those drawings at the top there. I didn't mention that earlier, but you've got that beautiful example there of the two reds and a three and a one, making a four at the top. And I would love to know more about what the child was doing and talking about there. So your documentation would really help. And then we've got the idea as well that four plus two equals six. And the bit that none of us were taught that six is therefore equal to four plus two. And I do this again on the Teaching Essential Number Sense course, looking at how part whole using subitizing teaches us this and can provide that link from doing it to recording it. So if you're watching this and you've got your one and two teachers who want to know how to you know, follow that process and how to get children from talking about it and doing it 
to recording it symbolically. That's That will really help you in the course. So we've got 6 equals 2 plus 4 and 6 subtract 2 equals 4 because there you can see in the picture if I've got 6 and I give you 2 I'm going to be left with 4. That's easy to understand. What's hard is then understanding how the symbols communicate that same story as it were. And we've got to take that step by step. So we've got even more here, splitting it in different ways. If you pause the slide here, you can have a look at not just two numbers in an equation, one plus two plus one plus three, because I can see that in the formation there, and six is equal to two plus two plus two, etc. Do pause the video, particularly if you've worked in key stage two, you will know that children really struggle with multiplication and division particularly, and efficient calculation because they have no concept image of a number in their mind. They don't see six as six things. And it is almost impossible to understand when someone says to you, what's a third of six? If you've got a strong concept image in your mind of what six looks like, can you see it here on the image? Can you see the two and the two and the two? And because there are three twos in six, each one of those twos is a third of six. So therefore, one third of six is two, and two thirds of six is equal to four, and three thirds is equal to six. That's key stage two knowledge that you have got from what you learned in reception and nursery here. So I'm hoping there's quite a lot of wow bombs going on here, and you think, gosh, if I'd been taught like this, I would understand far more, I would have cared far more. <laughs> Apologies if you hear the playing in the background when I'm recording this. Um, so have a look at the question here and I really want you don't if you're watching this as a senior leader as a math subject leader as a deputy or head do not go into a panic about how oh my goodness how do we get this across the whole school it that is what we're going to aim for but the way to get this across your whole school is to start with the teaching essential number sense course you've got to go for these things slowly get involved in the community, ask advice about how do we give children who've missed this the right experiences.